Let's make shrimp scampi, which I think translates to shrimp shrimp in Italian. We're gonna do a pound. This is just peeled, clean, deveined, tail on. Uh, you can do easy peel, <clears throat> but um, however you do it, buy them frozen, individually quick frozen. Because in 99% of the cases, the seafood that you find in the seafood counter at your grocery store was already frozen and then thawed. This thaws in cold water in like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And remember, you don't want your pasta water as salty as the sea. You want it as salty as soup. A well-seasoned soup. You could do this with any kind of pasta. You know, I've seen people do it with big shells. I think linguine is probably the classic one. Some rigatonis or some small curly shapes would also be fine. But for nostalgia's sake, I'd go with good old spaghetti. I think it was like 10 minutes. I'm just gonna dry them off. Give the shrimps a little press. They don't have to be like bone dry. I don't have to go crazy with this. And then basically whenever you're cooking shrimp, you want to give them essentially a, a quick marinade with some salt, a little bit of oil, A little bit of baking soda, you know, a quarter teaspoon, a pound or thereabouts. Let's try to be accurate. Sixteenth of a tablespoon. Who, who the fuck uses that? I would normally not measure this out. Yeah, about a quarter teaspoon, a pound. You know, it lowers the pH. It does some stuff to proteins, so on and so forth. Uh, the result is shrimp that are firmer, snappier, and less mushy, which are all things... I don't know, I want from shrimp. So I think shrimp scampi is maybe the first dish I ever made, besides learning how to make toast and pour my own cereal and stuff. It was definitely the first dish I ever made for other people where they were appreciative of it. I was, oh God, I don't know, eight or nine years old. And I was being babysat by my older cousin, who is maybe 12 or so years older than me, I think. My cousin and uh, his girlfriend were house-sitting, essentially, for my parents and babysitting me in the process. And I remember making shrimp scampi for them, and I remember them saying, like, wow, this is, like, one of the best things we've ever had. No doubt, I made that shrimp scampi with jarred garlic and bottled lemon juice and probably poorly cooked angel hair spaghetti. So it almost certainly wasn't very good, but um, they were either very good at lying or they were being honest. And that really affected me. I like the feeling of cooking for people and having them being like, wow, this is really good. So shrimp scampi is, uh, you know, pretty important, I guess, uh, in my life. It's also like really easy. It takes 15, 20 minutes if you if you work in fast. I don't know the origins of shrimp scampi. I don't know if there is like an Italian dish from which the kind of American version arose. I mean, it's shrimps cooked in garlic and butter. I'm sure it's ancient to some degree. I've never looked it up. I've kind of always thought of it as an American thing. And the flavors are incredibly simple. It's a lot of garlic, a lot of butter, usually a lot of olive oil, parsley, lemon, I put a little wine in mine and that's it. It's it's garlic shrimp, it's, it is not fancy. This is also a good dish if you're new to cooking or you're trying to kind of increase your cooking skills. Uh, this is a good dish to make because it's easy, you know, decently cheap depending on the price of shrimp. And <clears throat> it involves a little bit of technique, but not so much so that you gotta be sweating the details, you know? I like to keep my garlic pretty, pretty big slices, you know. And then you want a lot of butter, <laughs> or I want a lot of butter at least. Um, I think butter is like the key kind of sauce component here. It's a lot, but you know, 
Yeah, what are you gonna do? Don't eat it all the time. And don't worry, we're gonna put more fat. But this is uh, the good fat, right? Supposedly. Pretty decent amount. If you weren't watching, I'd probably put more. Be sure to get a lemon. Got a half a lemon. And that's basically all the prep. Now you just gotta do the cooking. Also, if your shrimp have shells, add the shells to the butter and garlic when you're cooking them. Cook them till they're nice and pink and then take them out. It'll add nice shrimpy flavor. You paid for those shells, you might as well fucking use them. We're looking melty. We're gonna put in our garlic and we're gonna cook this slowly. Just a nice bare sizzle. Bare sizzle. A little bit of red pepper flake is good in this. Use a lot if you like it spicy. I'm cooking for some people that are not crazy about the spice. And yeah, medium. This is probably too aggressive of a sizzle, I would say. We're gonna slow that down. You don't want any brown on this garlic, or at least I don't want any brown on this garlic. This isn't like, you know, alio e olio or any number of dishes where you kind of are looking for a nice toasty brown garlic. This I want just pure, soft, slightly translucent garlic. Garlic that if you were to bite into a nice big chunk of you say, ooh, that's nice. Not, oh, that's kind of rancid. <laughs> you could also take this in a number of different ways. Um, you know, you could add turmeric and maybe like a garam masala, kind of take this in a sort of Indian-ish uh, direction. You could do cumin as well. You could do a lot of smoked paprika and take this in a kind of a Spanish direction. Uh, you could do a bunch of oregano and thyme and even more lemon. Take this in a kind of Mediterranean... Ooh, actually za'atar would be really good in this too. And yeah, you really don't want to walk away from this because it will go brown the second you turn around. And I can actually smell that that's right on the edge of browning. So we're going to halt the cooking with some wine. Doesn't have to be nice. Just a little bit. Haven't salted yet because we're gonna be using some pasta water, which is already salty. <laughs> Look at that, I already fucked up the dish. I was supposed to put in the shrimp. Oh, what a dumbass I am. That's okay, we can cook the shrimp separately. Dude, when you have a camera on your head, you get to talk and you start doing stupid things. So, you know, sometimes a dish cannot be saved, but in this case, absolutely it can. You could actually just cook the shrimp in the, uh, in the, the, the stock that you just made. You just kind of lightly poach it, basically. But I'm being stubborn and dirtying a second dish uh, to make a point. Try to get them in kind of a, a flat layer, but again, they'll cook pretty easily, so it's no big, no big whoop. You also want to start cooking your pasta right around now. This cooks in, you know, eight or nine minutes, um, but you'll have extra time to finish it in the sauce. I'm doing, I don't know, half a bag, half a pound. Whoops. Okay, Google, set a timer for eight minutes. Yes, I'm doing that loudly on purpose so that it sets off all the other, uh, all the other Pixel users. This is another kind of technique thing that's nice is uh, you can learn to try to time your pasta with your whole dish so that it all kind of comes out at the same time. And shrimp basically tell you when they're done, you know, once they're a little bit pink. They got a little bit of color. They're basically ready to go. You definitely don't want to overcook these, only a couple minutes really. And I'll actually put a little bit of this butter sauce in here. So we're gonna get it all nicey nice. Now we can move back to the main attraction. So I lost a bunch of footage, which means that I'm gonna have to redo the pasta portion of this. Um, as you can see, everything is much smaller now because I'm just making one portion. That's totally fine. Just pretend like everything shrunk by 50%. The process is going to be exactly the same. You can do this for one person. You could upscale this to do it for 20. Since I'm making this for myself, I'm gonna make it significantly more spicy. The same rules apply, good amount of butter, good amount of 
olive oil, and you're just going to very, very, very slowly soften some garlic. You don't want it to burn. I feel like most people know this now, but you don't need a giant vat of boiling water if you're just making uh, one or two portions of pasta. You don't need something like this kind of rolling. A small vessel is totally fine. Uh, you don't even need to bring it to a boil. Uh, you can just put it in and have it come up to temperature. And in fact, the water that you're gonna use later to emulsify with the butter and the oil uh, will be even better for the task because it will be starchier. The only difference that you really wanna make is that you don't wanna salt it as heavily as you would a big ass pot of water uh, because it's going to concentrate more. So just salt it a little less, bend that pasta in there. Just give her a move around once it's pliable. No big deal, it's just pasta. This is also a thing that I feel like most people know by now, but putting olive oil in pasta water does nothing. It doesn't get absorbed by the pasta to any significant degree because it's oil and water. So what do you think it does? I suppose you could make like a, a an emulsion or something uh, with water and oil, almost make like a vinaigrette to cook the pasta in. That's an interesting idea, actually. Hmm. Especially if you're doing like pasta salad, if you made basically a vinaigrette that you boiled the water in. I mean, pasta water is basically already a brine, right? So if you actually made an emulsion of vinegar and water and oil and cooked the pasta in that, I'm gonna have to do some research on that, see if anyone's tried that yet. It may be the dumbest of ideas. Coming soon to a video on this channel, maybe, or maybe not. I'll probably just get lazy and not do it. All right, that garlic's looking on the verge of browning. So I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of wine, stop the cooking and to add some flavors that I like. If you don't have wine, you don't wanna use wine, that's totally fine. You can use water and a splash of vinegar and maybe a little, little pinch of sugar. It's been about eight minutes. Cool. Ow. So that's on the hard side of al dente where it's still, quite crunchy on the inside. We're not cooking it in the sauce for a hell of a long time. So I do want to make sure that it's, you know, pretty, pretty tender. Because the thing that happens when you finish a pasta in a sauce is that it enters, I think Daniel Gritzer from Serious Eats calls it a pasta bullet time, where the pasta cooking speed reduces pretty dramatically. So you can take pasta that's like one minute away from becoming soft. And if you throw it in the pan and start emulsifying it with the pasta water, it will take, you know, three, four, five minutes sometimes um, before it actually can hit the too soft point. That's good for me. That is what I would consider exactly al dente. By the time I move it all over and this comes back up to heat, will be exactly where I want it to be. No need to be too precious. We're gonna be putting some of this water in here anyways. I'm gonna add some of the water. I don't know how much this is going to ultimately need. We're gonna play it by ear. By play it by ear, I mean we're going to agitate the pan. Also, I forgot to add lemon juice. <laughs> That's okay, you can add this right at the end. And again, just agitation, agitation, agitation. The starch in that pasta water is going to emulsify with the butter and the oil to form a sauce but we are going to help that along by bashing the shit out of it. This is like the third time I've done this, by the way, I've lost this footage a bunch of times. So if I'm forgetting something uh, in this recipe, I don't care. <laughs> One thing that I do like adding to this very simple garlic pasta is a little bit of oyster sauce, uh, which makes it kind of close to a, a Vietnamese San Francisco style noodle. If you're comfortable with tossing, you can do a couple tosses. That will aerate it a bit, but you don't have to. And you see here, this is getting pretty tight. I wanna add some more water. And agitate, agitate, agitate. Just like a good protest, you gotta agitate the whole time. Keep the pressure on. And you can see this is like a velvety sauce now, right? Pretty velvety. It's actually tightening, it's tightening up as we are moving. This is close to what I want. But if you are gonna be holding this for one reason or another, add more water and keep the sauce looser than you think 
you want it because it will tighten up as it cools quite a lot, almost by like half. Parsley is going in. In fact, that's true of basically anything. You want it to be a little less done in the pan than you want it on the plate. Basically any amount of time is going to uh, cause this to tighten up more. So I want this a little more saucy. Even though it's done now, I want this a little bit more saucy when I plate it. So even just the time it's gonna take. There we go. That to me is very good. Let's give it a try. You can see rich and robed sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Needs a little salt. Lemony, buttery, very garlicky, very simple. Even if you didn't make this room, this is just kind of a very simple alio e olio type thing. That's delicious by itself and very easy. Now cut to a version of this that has shrimp. I had to get out of the kitchen pretty quickly. <laughs> and so we're gonna try this next to my bookshelf, next to my plant. Shrimps camping. Shrimp shrimps. Garlic, spaghetti, and scrumps. Mm. I mean, it's so simple. It's so easy, yet elegant, filling, convenient. Words, adjectives, nouns, questions, comments, critiques. Leave them down below. All right. Shrimp scampi. Take your shrimp scamping today. <laughs>